Hello there and welcome back to Betja Ballistics. Today we're talking about Termina Ballistics and we're doing that by shooting superabsorbent beads, often known as orbies. You may think this is one of those meaningless experiments you often find on YouTube, but you'll instead be surprised by the amount of useful knowledge we can get from it. I'm also going to shoot our wooden friend here as he stands behind 40 centimeters of orbies and see if he survives. But first of all, why orbies? Well, because they're mostly water. They're made up of superabsorbent polymers and once grown, they're 95% water by weight. Actually, they contain so much of it that from the bullet's perspective, hitting orbies, water or any other soft material of similar density makes little difference. You'll soon understand why that is, but for now, let's do some experiments. Here I've got this pipe completely filled with orbies. It is about one meter long and I'm going to shoot it with a few different guns. We'll see if anything goes through and empty it at the end to see how deep each bullet has gone. First, I'm going to shoot it with a 9mm full metal jacket from a Glock 19. It didn't really do much of anything and it clearly didn't go through. A 357 Magnum fired from a 6 inch barrel was next. I also wanted to take the opportunity to show the different behavior of hollow point bullets, so I shot a 115 grain one. However, this time I had forgotten to screw the cap all the way in. So here's what Walmart brand demolition range probably looks like. But as Elon Musk says, every time he blows up something, that's why we test. So I tried to clean up the mess, refilled the tube and screwed on the lid, this time for good. Then I repeated the test, which this time went as planned. Once again, no sign of penetration. I then tried a jacketed soft point of similar weight. I wasn't expecting it to behave much differently, but it's going to be interesting seeing the different information. Now, going towards more powerful calibers, 762 by 39 is somewhere in the middle between pistol and high power rifle calibers, so I figured it should have been next. What I didn't figure out was that I had picked an aftermarket magazine that doesn't fit this AK, so I had to load one round directly in the chamber. Once again, no visible damage on the sides, nor on the bottom of the pipe, so the bullet clearly stopped inside. Now, let's try to apply the same tactic that we would use to go through hard materials and use a high-velocity, thin, long rifle bullet. I picked up a 6.5x47 Lapua, which is close in size to a 308 Winchester up to the shoulder, but using a thinner bullet. The result is quite a spicy load. The ones I used here were around 900 meters per second, which is about the same velocity as a 5.56, but with a bullet that's twice as heavy. The first round was a 139 grain match bullet, and a contraption survived it with no apparent damage. So I tried to shoot it again, but this time with a lighter and faster 110 grain solid hunting bullet. which totally wrecked the poor thing. But look at how it did it. It blew up the pipe and its cap, but didn't go through. The explosion was the result of the massive energy transfer, which increased hydraulic pressure beyond what the pipe could hold. At this point, I can tell you that what you see wasn't just a random pipe filled with orbies, but a simple bullet trap I've made a long time ago and that I used to recover fired handgun bullets for forensics. Giant water also allows to accurately evaluate bullet expansion, and that's another purpose of this trap. Well, used to be at least. Anyway, I will now empty what remains of it and give two useful sets of information at the same time. First, how a simple bullet trap can be made, and second, how different bullets behave in soft materials and liquids. Now you're probably thinking, why don't you just use ballistic gel? So let me talk very briefly about that. It's a gel made up of 80 to 90% water by weight, the rest being animal gelatin, and is the go-to tissue analog used in ballistics. However, it stinks and rots, has to be kept refrigerated, requires huge pots to be processed, is not readily reusable and quite expensive. The advantages, of course, are that it shows the wound channel and the results can be compared to those fine in literature. However, in a lot of situations, this level of detail is not required and instead practical and rapid reusability is more important. Now, plain water could be used instead, but being a liquid, you need to fill at least a one meter deep container and then fire at it from the top, or ask somebody to let you shoot in their swimming pool, but that's not always an option. So that's why I opted for the beads. Let's give the trap a closer look. The inside of the pipe, after the first 20 centimeters or so, is covered with a few layers of rubber. That is necessary because most bullets will lose stability and follow a curved path. The rubber is there to soften the impact with the sides and deflect the bullet back on track. Then you can also see how the bullets I fired are coming out one by one, and what is really interesting is that they all stopped at similar depths. 
For sure they didn't go more than 80 centimeters into the gel because that's the depth where a clay plug starts, separated from the orbis by a rubber disc. And as you see, the disc was unpunctured, so we already know that none of the bullets went through more than 80 centimeters of the gel. In normal use, I would pour all of the orbis into a large container and separate the bullets. However, this time I didn't really want to put that blown up mess in my car, so I emptied it in the range backyard. And after a bit of search, I found all of the bullet parts. Before shooting the mannequin, let's give a closer look at what I recovered. This is the first bullet I fired, the 9mm full metal jacket, at about 340 meters per second. It's practically undeformed. Then we fired the 357 with two different bullets, hollow and soft point, both doing about 450 meters per second. Notice that there is a massive difference in expansion between them. Actually, the soft point only flattened up a bit, but overall it almost didn't deform. So here's another useful fact. At handgun velocities, soft points don't really deform much. I then fired the 762x39 from the AK with the 124 grain bullet doing about 730 meters per second, and here it is. This one did deform quite noticeably, but not in the way one would expect. It looks like it was squished from the sides instead than at the front, which is a clear indication that the bullet tumbled pretty early in its path through the gel, exposing its side to hydrodynamic pressure. Now, let's go to the fastest round. The 6.5mm bullets impacted the gel at around 900 meters per second. The first one, a 139 grain match bullet, disintegrated on impact with the jacket and core separating one from the other and getting eroded into lots of smaller pieces. Here you can see the main ones, which used to be the tail. The second one, slightly lighter at 110 grains and a bit faster, was a solid hunting bullet and is the one that blew up the whole thing. That kind of bullet is made to expand in a well-defined manner. It first expanded its tip, which then fragmented in these two pieces, while the shank of the bullet remained practically undeformed, being made of solid copper. Now let's go for a little science and understand the results better. To penetrate through any material, a bullet has to overcome three main forms of resistance. Mechanical strength, viscosity and inertia. Mechanical strength is typical of solids and is there regardless of velocity. Viscosity is typical of liquids and grows linearly with velocity. Finally, inertia is the force that has to be applied to the displaced material to move it out of the way fast enough. This latter grows with the square of the velocity, so if velocity doubles, inertia drag will increase by a factor of 4. As velocity increases, inertia drag grows at an ever-increasing rate and quickly overshadows viscosity. In our case, it also quickly overshadows mechanical strength, since our gel is very soft. Next important lesson of today's video, at ballistic velocities, over 200 meters per second, the resistance provided by soft materials is mostly due to inertial drag, so the only thing we care about the target material is its density. But why did all the bullets stop after about 60 centimeters, even though they started at very different velocities? Before giving a proper explanation, let's first do a test with only 40 centimeters of orbis, getting the help of our wooden friend to evaluate the results. For this test, I called my good friend Maurice, that some of you might remember, and asked him to shoot through the gel and into the mannequin's head with the AK using regular FNJ ammo. So, after thanking our wooden friend for his service, we got ready for the shot. Now, let's give a closer look at the damage. There is a hole in the mannequin's head, that's for sure. But his sacrifice wasn't in vain, we can learn much from it. First, the hole's shape matches that of the side of the bullet, meaning that, as expected, it was tumbling out of control. Also, it didn't really go that deep into the head, just a couple of inches through soft wood, which tells us that the residual velocity after 40 centimeters of gel was quite low, and most of the energy had already been scrubbed off. I also pulled out the bullet to show that it looks exactly the same as the one I had fired in the tube. It seems that in these soft materials, given a certain bullet weight, going from pistol to rifle velocities almost makes no difference in penetration, but just makes the impact more violent. To understand that, let's consider a simplified case where a rigid and stable bullet hits water and see how far it travels in it before slowing down to a certain threshold, let's say 100 meters per second. For an impact velocity of 200 meters per second, we would get 15 centimeters of penetration. For 400 meters per second, we get an additional 15 centimeters. 800, another 15 centimeters. At 1600, you guessed it, another 15 centimeters. I think you spotted the pattern here. Every time velocity doubles, penetration increases by a fixed amount. 
On the other hand, kinetic energy was quadruplicated at each step. That means that for a handgun bullet doing 400 meters per second, just getting about twice the amount of penetration would require the kinetic energy to be 16 times higher, which is clearly not an efficient approach. What the fluid feels, on the other hand, is a huge increase in pressure in the first part of the path where drag is higher, and that is what blew up the pipe. If instead I wanted to maximize penetration, the best way would be increasing the weight of the bullet by making it longer and reducing its velocity to avoid requiring massive amounts of kinetic energy. And not surprisingly, that's how a spear gun works, and also specialized underwater ammunition. This video is already too long, so I won't indulge on these, and instead try to get my hands on a few samples and cover them in a future video. Once again, a huge thanks goes to my patrons, which as usual are all listed here. Thank you all for watching, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you next time. Bye!